Alibaba Group, often referred to as the Chinese version of Amazon, has historically been a very fast-growing company, as you can see by the fast graph here. The company's earnings, as depicted by this orange line, had grown from when the company first went public in 2014 through the fiscal year end of March 2021. The company grew earnings at 27.07% a year. And as you can see, the stock price tracked that where the price tracked between 27 times earnings and 31 times earnings, which is the blue line on this graph. So the company was a growth stock and the market gave it a very high multiple of growth. But one of the aspects of investing in growth stocks, I've often talked about how they can be risky. So let's watch what happens now as we fast forward the company up through current. And what we see is in the fiscal year ending March of 2022, Earnings fell 16%. Fiscal year, March 2023, the earnings are expected to fall another 12% before they start growing again. And you can see the stock price, you know, fell from a high in October 30th of 2020 to its current low. It fell over 71%. This shows the problems with investing in high growth stocks when you have no dividends and you're totally focused on the growth. Note that the growth rate went from 27% down to 16% on average over this period of time. And as a result, the company has been resetting its valuations. The market has been resetting its valuations. Now, China just recently opened up their country again, and Alibaba has started to rally a little bit, and it may be a good buy. Estimates are for growth, long-term growth to average about 11% a year. And for the next couple of years, where this year obviously is still expected to be a down year, but then start growing at 18% and then followed by 14%. So if you were ever going to invest in this stock, now would be a really good time possibly to do that if you're a growth stock investor and doesn't care anything about dividends. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. Once again, it's my pleasure to bring you a subscriber request Tuesday video. Today, I'm going to be covering 42 stocks that you asked to see, and recently, and you know, as always, since I'm, you know, I'm I'm not making recommendations here. I'm simply showcasing the stocks that you, the subscriber to our channel, are interested in. I will give you a brief commentary on each of them as I go through them. And what I'm doing here, this is not a, a really, a, you know, what I would call a deep dive research. I leave that up to you to do it yourself as always. But what I am going to do is give you some comments about what I see based on the fundamentals versus the stock price that are depicted on the fast graph historical chart. I'm going to primarily look at earnings, but I'll also show some other metrics on certain companies when appropriate. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the 42 stocks you guys asked to see. And remember, these are not my picks. These are yours. So the first one on the list is AbV, And I've got free cash flow up here. And this is a relatively high-yielding stock, 3.76% dividend yield. You can see the stock has been trading at a discount to its normal valuation of around 15 times free cash flow. Most importantly, they are generating a lot of free cash flow, and their dividends is extremely well covered. You could say the same about operating cash flow and even the same about operating earnings. Operating earnings have grown to about 11%, primarily on the strength of Yumera, their flagship drug. However, that drug is going to be soon coming off a patent, and analysts are therefore expecting a negative year going forward. So even though the stock is still trading at a discount to its expected value, the next couple of years could be problematic for the company as we're not expecting a lot of growth. And of course, you know, we don't know what the company is going to be able to accomplish yet as far as replacing their flagship. So, you know, the stock still looks attractive. It still has a good yield. But I do want you to be forewarned that there very well could be some negative news coming out on the stock in the next few years. The next stock that you asked to see is Arbor Realty Trust. This is a mortgage REIT. I'm not really a fan of mortgage REITs, and this, this picture really tells you why. As you can see, earnings have been all over the place. The dividend is real high at 8.78%, and that attracts a lot of people. And you can see the cyclicality. It's very difficult for these, you know, to see these companies really generating any consistent earnings, although the company has, since 2012, actually performed reasonably well. 
If I look at this from a standpoint of cash flow, since cash flow is so critically important when you're looking at dividend stocks, you can see when their cash flow disappeared back here in um, you know 2008 and 9 during the Great Recession, so did their dividend. They actually eliminated their dividend. So that's something to caution you about. Now, more recently, in the you know last several years, the company was growing at a pretty good rate. But again, you can see the inconsistency, and it is expected to have negative earnings growth going forward, and we don't get a long-term forecast. I'm just not a fan of mortgage REITs, especially with changing interest rate environments. To be candid with you, I don't understand them, but if you're going to invest in them and you're going to chase that dividend yield of over, you know, of almost 9%, eight and three quarter, over eight and three quarters percent, you need to be well aware of the kind of risks that you face investing in companies like this. You can see the inconsistency is, you know, extreme to say the least. The next company that you asked to see is Adobe. Now, Adobe is an application software. It's a very you know, famous tech stock, if you will. You can see that the company has grown at about 16%. If I just look at the last 10 years, I do want you to notice that that growth rate has increased over 30%, which partially explains the high valuation. But even with the 30% growth, you can see that the stock clearly got overvalued and has now come back into alignment with that recent 30% growth. However, going forward, analysts are only expecting 14% growth, but they are expecting 15% growth. I always say, you know, you can learn a great deal from the past, but you always got to invest in the future, and you need to be aware of what the future might hold before you invest. But regardless, you can clearly see that Adobe has corrected itself as it should. And even on a price-to-sales basis, although sales growth has been very strong at over 19%, this company has traded at a normal price to sales of over 12, almost 13. That's extremely high as companies go. So, you know, be aware that you're not dealing with, you know, like the old saying, your grandfather's Buick here. This is a high risk, high growth tech stock. Now the correction has taken place. And that is always what you're exposing yourself when you're looking at these you know, high growth tech stock. Now, the next one I want to look at is American Financial Group. The graph is kind of interesting because they did pay a special dividend in 1221. I guess they sold a big portion of their business and they went ahead and distributed that to their shareholders. If you take the dividends off of the graph here, like I'm going to do now, you get a, a better sense of how fast the company's grown. It's grown at about 12%. Moderately cyclical, you know, somewhat inconsistent here and there, but the company has grown nicely. You know, the future is looking a little sketchy. You got to ignore, again, this dividend. That dividend was, um, you know, just exceptional. So I think the company might still be a little bit expensive based on you know, where it's currently trading at. I don't follow the stock. I don't know it. I would suggest you do some really extensive due diligence and research here to see what, you know, what the future might hold. But the fact that we're expecting flat growth going forward would be a red flag for me, at least. Anyway, that's American Financial Group, a property and casualty insurance. Now, one thing I want to point out, property and casualty insurance, you know, has been relatively benign or after coming out of COVID and everything. You can see the company had a real nice surge in growth in 2021. So take that into consideration. And again, they did sell off one of their businesses, which is where the special dividend came from. Now here's another REIT, AGNC Investment, one of the real popular ones, yields almost 12%, 11.79 or called 11.8%. But notice the very high payout ratios. The area below the white line is the dividend payout ratio. If I look at this one from a standpoint of operating cash flow, we get a little better picture. They do have operating cash flow that's relatively covered the dividend. But I do want you to notice how cash flow has been decreasing at a rate of about 8.44%. So if you look at this from a standpoint of performance, it's generated a pile of dividend income, almost three times what the market did. But it actually lost about over 50% of your principal during that time. And it should be clear to you by looking at this graph that the reason the principal has deteriorated is because the company's operating results, their cash flow, their operating cash flow and operating earnings have been in a steady decline during that period of time. 
So again, I don't know what rising interest rates really mean. Again, this is not a sector I've really invested in, especially in you know the recent interest rate cycle. Again, you'd want to do some real serious work on this one if you were going to pick an investment. The only thing I'll say for it, it does look like it's relatively inexpensive given today's blended PE of 4.4 and an earnings yield of over 22%. But keep in mind, the earnings are changing going forward. Next stock you want to look at is, I want to show you the line technologies. Again, this is another, you know, classic idea of a stock that was very popular, had a lot of growth. It was growing at a relatively high rate for the last 15 years or so, over 28%. The market, therefore, put a 28 PE on it for most of the time since 2010. But then we got really expensive prior to COVID. You can see the volatility that created and how, you know, the stock really had nowhere to go because it was priced so high. COVID brought it back down into fair value. We did have a negative earnings year, but earnings recovered strongly and the stock reacted. And then earnings are falling again and the stock has now corrected back into what looks like fair value. But going forward, we're not expecting to see the growth that the company's historically grown at. So I would caution you, do your homework and due diligence. The stock price looks attractive because it has fallen, but you're still dealing at a very high P.E. ratio and a very low earnings yield. I want to make that clear. So be cautious and really do your homework, especially when you're looking at these growthy stocks. I covered Alibaba in the, in the introduction. Again, the key is, you know, possibly it's corrected enough. And if Chinese does open up their country now, and leaves it open, it could be a time to be taking a position if you're a growth stock investor. Brookfield Asset Management, I guess, is a Canadian-based company. I'm not really um, too familiar with it. Again, somewhat cyclical and spotty, but it actually has put together double-digit growth going forward. If you look at it from a standpoint of operating cash flow, the cash flow has covered the dividend, but the dividend, as you can see, has been relatively small. The stock does look inexpensive based on cash flow, but for some reason, analysts expect a negative earnings growth. So I see a negative earnings growth coming out here in the future. Therefore, I'd be very cautious that you could still see some negative news coming out on the stock over the next year or so. So again, you want to do your homework, but the company has put together a pretty decent performance record historically. It's actually outperformed the S&P 500 on both dividend income and capital appreciation. But again, it's, you know, the operating results have been, I'll call them cyclical to say the least. Next stock we're going to look at is Ball Corporation, metal and glass containers. Very high quality company. This stock, as you can see, traded at 15 times earnings very, very consistently and had very consistent growth. Then starting in 2014, we saw, you know, three or four years, three years, I guess, of negative earnings growth. The stock didn't really collapse, but notice that it didn't really go up either. It just kind of stayed steady. And then all of a sudden, earnings start growing again at double digit rates. It's averaged over 11% historically long term. The market got really irrational, exuberant about it. COVID came and corrected, but not enough. And then it just stayed overvalued. And what I'm suggesting here is when the stock is in a high valued position like that, you're not able to participate fully in what the business is capable of generating. I still think this one's slightly expensive. I would watch it if it got cheaper. This would be the kind of company you'd want to own for the long run for a total return investment. It does pay a relatively low dividend. It has a reasonably good long-term dividend record, although they did freeze their dividend in 2014 and 15 temporarily. Um, and again, that was during when their earnings you know, went through that weakness. So again, a good quality company, double B plus rated. You know, it's been a, it's a metal and glass container, you know, business overvalued for much of the last several years. And, you know, you can see the froth that was going on in this market. BRT Apartments Corporation is a residential REIT. So earnings don't really work when you're looking at REIT. You want to go to funds from operations and again, I see a very inconsistent company. I see a high dividend yield. I see a very high valuation. This is one that I personally would pass on. I see a lot of really good REITs out there that look attractive. Although this is FFO. It looks a lot better with FFO. But I still don't consider this a real attractive residential REIT compared to a lot of REITs that you can invest in out there. CDW Corporation Technology Distributors, they distribute a lot of tech type products. You can go to their corporate website directly from Fast Graphs. You can look at, you know, all the various brands that they sell and the various product lines that they sell. The company has been a very consistent 9% grower. 
It was trading at, you know, a 15, what I would call reasonable valuation most of that time. COVID, it corrected, and then it got irrationally exuberant. It's, it's expected to put together a good 2021, which it did do. It ended in uh, in December, and it's expected to have another, you know, 20%-ish earnings. So the stock got really high. But now with the market correcting, you can see that the stock is coming back down into reality. I don't think it's quite there yet, but it is a very good company. If you can get it a little cheaper, it might be one you want to take a closer look at. Comcast, you know, all the various streaming services, Universal, etc. Notice how when the stock was trading at a very high multiple back here, there was actually no earnings growth. The stock didn't go anywhere for several years. The recession brought it down to a 15 PE. And then once that occurred, then the stock went through a nice growth curve and it traded around, it grew about 14% a year and stayed within that 15 to 17 PE. It got a little expensive there for a while. Um, it's now theoretically undervalued based on that. If you look at forecasts, it's expected to still grow at 13 or 14% a year, much higher on the long-term basis. So, you know, if you were going to take a look, 2.45% dividend yield, a very comfortable, uh, healthy earnings yield of 7.6%. Comcast looks very attractive. It's A minus rated. It has about, you know, 50% debt to capital ish. So this could be one you might want to take a closer look at that I would, you know, be interested in looking at myself. I think it's, it's attractively priced here. Carvana is a classic example of stocks that, you know, trade on hype and hysteria. You can see the company has actually made no money at all. Now, the one thing that, you know, people were basing it on was price to sales. You can see sales growth has been high at around 36%, and it was trading about one-time sales on average, and maybe slightly less. Then it got really expensive here where it started to trade at two and three times sales. It's now become very inexpensive again. You know, forecasting forward sales are expected to continue to grow. Long-term growth, they expect it to fall. I did see an article on this company. I don't follow it very much. But I did see an article where they talked about the company was kind of trying to reinvent itself. So that's something you might want to look into if you decide that now would be a good time to invest in Carvana. You know, they had, they had it's kind of like the vending machine of cars, if you will. D.R. Horton, home building industry. You can see home building has been hot. You know, the stock has typically, I do want to make this point. If you look at it normally, this has been about a 12 multiple company. It's only currently trading at 48 Growth rates are expected to kind of slow down as the housing bubble ends, but I think the stock is cheap enough right now with a 1% dividend yield that if you're looking for, you know, a, a good speculation on a company, you know, getting giving you some PE expansion, maybe not a lot of growth going forward for the next couple of years, but some growth, you could take a look at D.R. Horton and company. A lot of home builders look just like this company. Walt Disney is a very interesting stock in that, you know, it's obviously very popular. Now, the company has run into some a lot of politics here recently, especially in the state of Florida, if you've been following it. But prior to that, you know, the company went, you know, was a good, consistent blue chip, you know, stock. Everybody knows Walt Disney. I won't talk a lot about it. But when COVID came and they had to close their parks, only parts of their business were running. They did eliminate their dividend. But yet the stock still held up very well for, you know, over a year here. And then all of a sudden now that, you know, things are starting to hit the fan politically and some other issues, the company is expected to recover. You know, longer term, Disney is expected to, to grow again at very healthy rates. So it may be, you know, a time to speculate in taking a position. They are expected to reinstate their dividend. But all the reasons the stock is down, I think, are valid. And I think you ought to take that into consideration as you look at the company. I don't consider this, I'll say, dirt cheap at this point. But I do think it's certainly a lot better buy than it was a year or so ago. And hopefully they will reinstate their dividend, et cetera. And we won't run into something like another pandemic like COVID again. Enphase Energy, this is you know, semiconductor equipment. I found this company interesting. If you go into the company's website, it's a new day for solar. I don't really know a whole lot about this company, but apparently they have some solar products in their pipeline that look attractive. If you shorten the time frame on this stock and look at it for the last several years, it's been growing at over 90%. This is putting a 90 PE on it. I consider that extremely high regardless forecasting. It's expected to you know, be growing earnings at around 25% a year. So this still is a growth situation. 
you know, long term and short term, but I still think you're paying a very high premium price for it at this point. If you look at it from a sales point of view, you know, sales have been very strong and that's what's gotten people excited. But even with sales, it's normally a three or four times sales company. It's trading even today at over 16 times sales. So I'd be cautious with this one. It looks like it could be exciting if the market continued to adjust and we got an opportunity to buy this cheaper and you're a speculative growth stock investor, you might want to keep your eye on M phase anyway. Enterprise Products Partners is an MLP, oil and gas storage and information. I think these are all about their dividend. Therefore, I like to look at these from a standpoint of operating cash flow. I want to see if the dividends being covered by cash flow. And Enterprise does that extremely well. Solar may be the future or alternative may be the future, but that future still is a relatively long ways away. Free cash flow is a little different story here. I'd be cautious about that. But you are looking at 6.7% dividend yield. The company does trade according to its dividend. That's one thing that I've done with these some of these MLPs. I've taken the earnings and the normal PE off the stock. And I know it's hard to see here, but there's a this would be what normally is a white line on the graph. That's the dividend line. You can see that this is very yield oriented, very yield price sensitive, if you will. So anyway, there's Enterprise Partners. Very interesting at this level. I think the stock does look cheap today, or at least fairly valued, if you will. Next one I want to look at is Fidelity National Financial. This is another property in casualty insurance. You see this surge in growth that I mentioned earlier. The market has given it a premium valuation. Property and casualty, though, the bubble is expected to burst to some extent. So if you look into the future, again, expect some negative news possibly if the earnings are going to be negative this year. But, you know, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful, as Warren Buffett said. So this may be a good time to pick up this 4% yielding property and casualty insurer. Fiera Capital. As an asset management and custody firm, don't know a lot about it. Some inconsistency in earnings, very high dividend yield. You know, forecasts for the company are, again, looking like we're going to see some negativity coming up in the next year or so. There is no long-term growth forecast. It's only followed by seven analysts, and there's no analysts really giving it any type of earnings or dividend for the next year. So you'd really want to do some serious work on this one. It does look cheap. I say that's the one thing about it. It looks very inexpensive at a P.E. ratio under 7 and an earnings yield of over 15%. So it does look attractive from that point of view. Um, Haynes Brands, you know, the underwear company, as you notice, you know, it's gone through a lot of cyclicality. And here's a nice picture. You can see when the stock was growing, how the market reacted to that. But then as it started to hit some operating issues, it got very hard for it to grow and actually had several years of negative earnings growth. You can see that the stock price reacted to that very negatively. And it's down about 61% from its high in April of 2015. So be aware of that. It does have a, you know, enticing almost 5% dividend yield, very high earnings yield. But now the question is, what's earnings going to look like? Now, analysts that do follow this company expected to be relatively stable growth, only about 4% long-term, but a relatively stable growth once we get past this year for the next couple of years. So again, this could be a great opportunity to be investing in Haynes Brands if you're an income investor. Houlihan Loki, investment banking. Nice record here. For some reason, we're expecting a negative year. It does give us a nice 2.5% dividend yield, a real nice 8% earnings yield. Company is forecast to grow rather slowly, and that's because we have this negative year. But after this negative year, we're expecting 11 and 9% going forward. Long-term growth are not giving us one. But the bottom line is this, you can see this company has tracked its operating results. And right now it does look like a bargain, but again, expect some negative news coming up. And remember, we're possibly heading into a recession and a negative market. So, you know, valuation becomes more important than it ever has. Merrimax is specialty stores, you know, primarily marine, you know, boats and yachts. They have various brands of boats and material. This is one that you'd want to take a closer look at. It's kind of a leisure business. You know, the boating industry apparently benefited from COVID, as it looks like. But notice the cyclical nature. Very difficult to make money here. Company pays no dividend. And growth is expected to be relatively spotty going forward. So the stock is cheap looking, but, you know, it's very difficult to forecast this. You know, you can always see this in an analyst scorecard. You can just see how difficult 
analysts have had trying to get the earnings forecast right. So it's really hard to trust anything when you're looking at the fundamentals and you know trying to come up with some reasonable forecast. Imperial Brands, another tobacco company, paid a special dividend during the recession. You know, it's very flat earnings growth, if you will. For the last decade or so, earnings growth has only been about 1%. It does offer a very high dividend yield. I think there are some better tobacco choices. You know, companies like um, Eltrail, M-O is the symbol, of course. I've re- featured that one before. I like that a lot better. It's, a, it's But again, this stock is cheap and does offer a very high dividend yield. Japan Tobacco is you know, in a similar situation. The company has almost a 5% dividend yield, 4.91. Earnings yield are just under 9 But notice how the earnings have been sinking for the last several years and how the stock price has tracked that. So going forward, we're still looking at some very flat to negative earnings growth going in the future. You've got a lot of yield. The dividend, you know, as far as operating cash flow, the dividend seems to be well covered, but I don't, you know, there's a possibility you won't see a lot of growth from this company. So take it into consideration. It's not just about the dividend and the PE. It's about what the future holds. Always remember, you can learn from the past, but you can only invest in the future. Main Street Capital is an asset management and custody firm. You know, one of these high yielders, 6.71%, pays out almost all of its earnings in dividends. I don't, again, follow this company cash flows. I just don't get where they're getting the income for this. So this is something I leave to you to do your own homework on. But I've decided, you know, a long time ago not to really look at companies like this because they just don't have the characteristics that I personally look for as a conservative income-oriented investor. They do have the income. If you look at their long-term performance, it's actually been about equal to the market on capital appreciation, but they've buried the market You know, if you using the S&P 500 in income. It does look relatively cheap historically. Forecast, it looks relatively cheap. So if you're you know comfortable investing in a stock like this, you know, it might be a time to do it. Mondelez was a spinoff originally from Kraft. They had a little trouble getting their mojo. But notice for the last several years here, they've been growing at about 7 or 8%. But the market's putting a very you know premium valuation on this stock. It does offer a 2.2% dividend yield. It looks a little better when you look at it from a cash flow standpoint. But I do think it's kind of expensive here, but yet it, it's been expensive for several years in a row. So... You know, there are a lot of choices out there, triple B rated, that give you this kind of growth and this kind of yield that I think give you some better valuation. But, you know, that's for you to decide for yourself. Max Linear is a semiconductor company. Very interesting picture here. It's growthy, obviously, no dividend. You know, it did have some pretty good performance when it grew. Then it had several negative years, came into COVID. And then for some reason, post-COVID, it's had some just really explosive growth. The stock price originally reacted to that, but now we've seen a big correction. It's trading about 12 times earnings. Forecast to keep growing at double-digit rates here. Long-term growth rate is expected to be 15 to 20%. So this could be an interesting growth stock in speculation that certainly looks cheap enough at today's value. So you might want to take a closer look at Max Linear. Patria Investments is another asset management company. I believe this company operates internationally. I'm not really don't really know this company. You know, they have the long term commitment to clients. They're, they have closed end funds, infrastructure, real estate, and credit. You know, the firm is a leading asset management company in Latin America. There's a lot of political issues in Latin America. They have strung together some pretty good years. They do offer you over a 5% dividend yield. The company has no credit rating. It could be intriguing to see if you can learn about this, but again, I think there are some issues you know, looking at it being international. Petróleo Brasileiro, I guess, you know, is a, obviously an integrated oil and gas company, obviously in Brazil. Very inconsistent. You know, I just don't think this is the kind of company investors want to be investing in. Now, the dividend yield they're showing is over 30%. I you know, find that hard to believe, but the dividend record has been spotty. You know, going forward, it's you know, expected to kind of have negative growth going forward. So this would be really speculative, in my opinion. Notice the long-term performance here has been actually negative. So that's something to you know, consider. It does throw off a lot of income currently, but I'm not sure how real that is. That's something you'd want to look real closely at. Pinterest is an interesting interactive media and services company. You can see the hype and hysteria it did have very explosive growth. 
but now the stock is expected to slow down, you know, have negative growth for the next year or two. Forecasting growth is around 3.39% expected. So, you know, this would be one that is corrected now. I don't know if it's really worthwhile investing in. You can go into the website and see if you can, um, you know, learn as much as you can about the stock. We all, I think, have used it or know about it, but, you know, it's certainly a better value today than it was you know, in the last couple of years. This just really shows how crazy overvaluation and how badly it can hurt investors. You know, using the calculator function, that's a 75% drop just in the last couple of years. And I attribute most of that to simple overvaluation. Hubmatic is an advertising company. Not really sure what this company does. You know, you'd have to you know look into it. It does digital advertising, obviously, of some sort having a, expected a negative year this year, which brought it into rally. This shows the classic IPO with a lot of hype and hysteria. And then a year later, you can always buy it cheaper than it originally came out at. The stock still could have some shorter term issues going before it starts growing again. So this would be one you might want to take a look at for the future. But I think you'd still want to see it cheaper if possible, if you got that opportunity. Next stock I'm going to look at is RH, Home Furnishing Retail. Look how overvalued this stock got. It's had a pretty decent growth record. Again, no dividend. It's purely a growth stock. I went into the website of this company just so I hadn't really had any experience or knowledge about it. it. Looks like a pretty interesting company. It's out of San Francisco. They have restaurants and home furnishings of all kinds, bed, bath, lighting, textiles, rugs, windows, etc. So there's a lot to learn about here. I don't know much about it. It is a growth stock. It's forecast to have just very moderate growth going forward for the next couple of years. Double-digit long-term growth, however. So the price certainly looks inexpensive enough that you might want to spend a little bit of your you know, precious time learning more about this company if you're a growth stock investor. Republic Services, environmental facilities, you know, garbage collection, and so on. Always been trading at a premium valuation. The valuations lately, I think, have just become crazy. I just can't see paying these kind of prices for this. There's so many opportunities out here, especially in this market, to get 8 or 9 or 10 or even 11 or 12% growth and a lot better valuation. Earnings yields only 3.2%. Dividend yields only 1.34%. I think this is simply overpriced. Good company. You know, triple B plus rated has, you know, pretty good historical record, pretty consistent growth, consistent dividend growth. But I just think you're paying too much to buy all that growth. Sandy Spring Bank Corp is a regional bank. Like most regional banks, you know, they got hurt during the financial debacle. They've kind of recovered pretty nicely. The stock does offer a 3% yield. It's trading at less than 10 times earnings with a almost an 11% earnings yield. So, you know, this could be an attractive time to be picking up shares in this, especially if you work in their region or know the bank or use the bank. Spartan Nash is a food distributor. A lot of issues coming up in food distribution. You know, I think we're hearing about it, possible food shortages, et cetera. I really don't know. But the point is, we're not expected to see much growth going forward with the company. If you look at it from a standpoint of, you know, we are expecting to see good growth this year, but then 6% and then nothing the following year. Long-term growth is expected to be less than 3%. So I would say this one's pretty highly valued, and I don't think it has a good enough track record, at least to interest me. It may interest you, but I do think it's overvalued at today's prices. Application software, it looks like a very nice tech company. I'm not real familiar with it. Modest dividend, stock looks very undervalued. Growth has accelerated pretty nicely here in the last several years. The company is forecast to continue growing at about 6.5%. We're not getting a long-term growth forecast. So this is one you might want to learn more about. It certainly has a high enough earnings yield and a low enough valuation to make it worth spending a little time to research it. Stellantis, automobiles, you know, this is I think Chrysler, you know, et cetera. They've recently merged. I think I've done a video on this one in the past. These are some of their, you know, their brands, Fiat, Jeep, Maserati, which is a nice brand, Ram trucks, et cetera. But you can see the inconsistency. I've always said it's very difficult to make money in automobile manufacturing. And this is, again, you know, case in point. You can see how inconsistent and how inconsistent the price has been. It does have a very nice dividend yield, but they did eliminate their dividend in 2020 out of COVID. So again, you're dealing with something that is not real predictable. Analyst scorecard is horrible. That's not you know, unusual for companies in this industry. Floor Industries is, you know, 
It's called automobile manufacturers, but they're primarily known for their motor coaches. If you're not familiar, that's been a pretty hot item here for a while. Stock has been, earnings have been negative, I say, for the last couple of years, but it did have a nice stretch where it had growth. It is expected to give good growth again, followed by, you know, falling earnings. So again, you're dealing with something here that's pretty difficult to really forecast. I don't like companies that are inconsistent like this. But anyway, that's Thor Industries. Vail is a steel company. I never invest in heavy metal companies for this reason. You can look at Alcoa, you can look at U.S. Steel, you can look at any of these steel companies. They all turn out to be, you know, very similar in terms of, you know, earnings growth like this. You don't, there isn't any usually. It's very cyclical, very hard to see them make any money. So I'm not a big, you know, investor in, in any type of heavy metal company, steel, aluminum, whatever. So I would pass on that one. XPO Logistics, very spotty record, relatively low quality, no dividend. The stock does look cheap here, but this isn't the kind of company that I'm willing to spend a lot of time on. Operating cash flow doesn't look too bad in recent years. Sales, it looks a lot better if you're looking at it price to sales. But again, I think you're dealing with a lot of speculation here and you'd want to research this thoroughly. Zoom video, we all know what's happened to Zoom here coming out of the pandemic, you know, we had 900% growth, 6,900% growth. So we got this 207% growth record. But, you know, you need to put that into perspective. It doesn't look so hot when you get rid of these one-time 100-year event. And growth going forward is not expected to be very strong. So the company has corrected dramatically. You can see that from being massively overvalued, in my opinion, because these numbers don't make any sense. When you're doing research, you know, this graphing tool, FastGraph, is such a powerful, wonderful tool, but it can only report and calculate the numbers that are fed into the system. So, you you know, when you see something growing at 208%, it ought to be common sense to you to realize that's unsustainable. And then when you look at it, you know, more forward, you know, you start calling out some of these really crazy years. You start seeing you're looking at 5 or 6% growth. And then, of course, that makes the valuation look outrageously expensive during that period of time. So, you know, not one that I'm real a big fan of as far as the long term goes. Apparel Retail, Zumia, as I guess it's called. I'm not familiar with this company. Um, you can go into their website. They have a lot of, you know, T-shirts. They sell a couple of branded items. Again, I don't know this company. I don't know what the allure of this company is. As you see, it's really not had any real growth to speak of. The number says 16%, but you can, you know, change your time frame. You get 19% growth here, re, you know, in the more recent times. 19% growth again in a short period of time. The question is, forecast growth is only expected to be 4%-ish, and there is no long-term growth given. I don't think this is an investment-grade company. It might be a trading stock, but not really an investment-grade company. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival for another subscriber request Tuesday. You guys really bringing up some interesting looking companies here. A lot of companies I know very little about, but I hope you get a perspective of what of how a company's stock price ultimately reacts to its performance over time. And you want to try to find, from my view, the prudent way to invest is to find very consistent companies with consistent dividend records and earnings records. If you're a speculator, you know, you want to try to really find you know, high margins of safety with valuation and look for, you know, PE expansion and growth if possible. But again, a lot of choices here, a lot of companies to look at. I thank you again for giving them to me. Keep in mind, these are not my recommendations. These are just simply companies that you asked to see. And I've only, you know, highlighted all these companies. So please take into consideration as you look at it. Anyway, thanks for watching.